This is a big screen on a not very big phone. And this is an even bigger screen on a not much bigger phone. It's Galaxy S8. So the Samsung Galaxy S8 comes in two sizes, 5.8 inches and the S8 Plus, which is a 6.2 inch screen. What's new here is that they're super tall because they got rid of the bezels on the top and the bottom of the phone. And now the sides are still curved like they are on like the Galaxy S7 Edge. That's just the default way that these phones come now. Samsung's now calling it an infinity display. And I don't know, the curve is fine. I'm not picking up a lot of extra little taps. It looks really sharp and it's got, you know, HDR color if you care about that sort of thing. What's interesting is they both have the same resolution, which is 2960 by 1440. Uh, but you know, Samsung makes great screens and these look great. Really, the thing that hits you hardest when you look at the hardware on this phone is that the whole thing just looks and feels really great. The seams are even harder to find than they are on the S7 Edge. The glass just sort of melts into the sides and they don't have a camera bump on the back. This honestly, it feels like some of the best phone hardware I've ever used. It's way better than say the iPhone 7. So getting rid of those bezels on the top and the bottom means they had to make some changes. So you'll notice there's no home button here on the front. It's not on the back either. What there is is like a virtual home button. Samsung has added some haptic feedback. It's kind of like force touch on the iPhone, but it's only right here at the very bottom. And so even if you don't see a software home button, you can still press hard on that area of the screen and that is going to take you home. If you wanna unlock the phone, uh, you actually have three different ways you can do it now, well four. You can do your password or your pattern as usual, but there's a fingerprint sensor on the back. It is located right next to the camera, which is a little bit hard to reach and not great if you're left-handed. And it also means you're probably gonna end up putting your finger on the camera sometimes, which could cause some smudges, so make sure you wipe it off before you take a picture. There's also iris scanning, which we saw on the Note 7 RIP, which is very secure. And then there's now face scanning. I don't think it's quite as secure as the iris scanning or the fingerprint sensor, but my God, is it fast. Like, look at how fast this thing unlocks. You blink and you miss it. You don't have to wait for it to scan your face at all. It just works. They're a little bit narrower than the Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge, and they're just a little bit thicker, but not so much that you really notice it. What it means is that they can fit in a 3000 milliamp battery on the S8 and a 3500 one on the S8 Plus. That's not exactly pushing the limit in terms of battery capacity, but I have to imagine that Samsung isn't really interested in pushing the limit on battery capacity right now after what happened with the Note 7. They also do all the stuff that you normally expect from a Samsung phone. It's got IP68 waterproofing, there's four gigs of RAM, there's 64 gigs of onboard storage, and yes, there's expandable storage here, and yes, there is a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. One thing that Samsung didn't change is the camera. On the back, it's still a 12 megapixel sensor, although Samsung says it has improved the image processing software. We really like these cameras on the F7. I imagine they're gonna be just as good, probably a little bit better here on the S8. One thing that is new is the front-facing camera. It's now eight megapixels and it has autofocus, which is pretty cool. When you're in the camera, you're gonna start to see one of the big, big things that's new in the S8. It's called Bixby and it's Samsung's intelligent agent. So let me just show you how it works in the camera to start. When you've got the camera app open, you can hit this button and then it'll go into Bixby mode and it's going to auto detect whatever it sees on the screen. So if I pointed at some flowers, it's going to recognize that they're flowers and show me pictures of more flowers or maybe let me go buy some flowers. Or here I am pointing it at a watch and although it wasn't able to figure out exactly what model of watch it was, it actually like figured out it was a watch and showed me a bunch of pictures of other watches or let me go to Amazon to buy a watch that looks like it, which is really impressive. But beyond like AR stuff in the camera, what Bixby's really for is to sort of make it easier to use Samsung's own software. Their goal is to have anything that you would do by touching the phone, you can do by speaking to the phone. And so with any compatible app, it's of course starting on Samsung's apps. And the way that you trigger it is by holding down a side button, which is actually a really bold move. They've got a whole extra button here. And if Bixby turns out to not be that great, they've basically wasted part of the hardware of the phone on this thing. So we're gonna have to see, but unfortunately we weren't able to try Bixby yet. It is still, you know, coming out when the phone comes out. They didn't have it here at the demo station. So pre-orders for the S8 and the S8 Plus begin on March 30th, and it goes on sale on April 21st. 
In the US, it's gonna be available in three colors, black, gray, and silver. And I can't tell you the pricing yet because that's always up to the carrier. So you're just gonna have to go see what Verizon or AT&T or T-Mobile or Sprint are gonna charge you. For much, much, much more on everything Samsung announced today, you should check us out, we are The Verge.